year we gather here. The whole town. The whole town. In Boston, we stopped fighting the war 15 years ago. You won it, Taylor. You can afford to forgive. Excuse me. Please. What are you doing here? Well, I just wanted to... I thought that today It's I... not fitting for you to be here, especially today. That's just what I've been telling you. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it fitting for that Yankee to be parading here on Confederate Day? Mind I got... your manners, boy, and your tongue. You're not wanted here. Now go. But why, Colonel Asher? Why, sir? I reckon we'd better go, Loretta. Nobody told me to leave. Did the job. But Loretta, You heard I what the colonel said, didn't you? Well, I see you tonight at the gardens. It's up to you, Oscar. I'll be there. My dear friends, in this year of grace, 1880, once again, we, the people of Bowdoin, have gathered here as one family to honor the memory of our sons and brothers. Time has begun to heal the ravages of war and defeat, but the infamy of the betrayal and slaughter of 27 boys must never be forgotten. And though the unknown traitor has thus far escaped human justice, there is a divine retribution that cannot long be denied. To you, comrades in arms, we pledge that never will we forget the Judas who led the enemy down that hill to your sleeping camp, who pointed to your silent tents and whispered, give me my 30 pieces of silver. Now go and destroy them. What's going on out there? Bowdoin's annual masquerade party. Yeah. Once you see GR people dress up as heroes, they have themselves a fine time. You know, I don't understand Greek, Papa. That's very unfortunate. Parents love their children as soon as they are born. But children love their parents only after time has elapsed. And they have acquired understanding. Mm -hmm. Aristotle. How's the world of fashion, Benjamin? I was in it for only 24 hours. That isn't very long, is it? You ordered me back. Did I? What for? The pleasure of it, I reckon. Certainly. But how did I justify the pleasure? You said the books need a check. Books? I wouldn't let you tamper with my library, Benjamin, would I? Cash books, stock books, books. Oh, but why today? I don't know, Papa. I'd have liked to have stayed on in Mobile. I had some business. But I brought you back to look at store books. Now, why did I do that? I must have had some reason. What business did you have in Mobile? I wanted to invest $2,000 in Birmingham Coal Incorporated. Why? Because it'll bring $50,000 someday. What if they can't sell their coal? What if the people you're lending money to can't sell their cotton? I'll have their land. Be kind of pleasant living on a plantation, like uh, Lionette. 
Would you like to live in a coal mine? Well, I couldn't raise the money anyway. I suppose you haven't changed your mind about not lending it to me. Lionette was a beautiful house. Very gracious in design, very well conceived. It can be again. No, Benjamin, I'd rather keep my money on hand for the day the bag trees come for a loan. We can keep it on hand a mighty long time, Papa. The bag trees would sooner starve. Forget about the coal. Bad business. You think it's good business to keep the store open today? Mobile people go without food to buy Birmingham coal. They do anything to get a few shares. They're hard to get, mighty hard. I was lucky, Papa. Horace Giddens had his bank put a few shares aside for me. But they won't be able to hold them unless I'm back with the cash before the end of the week. Why didn't you ask him for a loan? Horace Giddens is a stranger, Papa. If my own father won't give me the money... Well, I thought he was so fond of it. He's fond of the whole family, especially my sister. But unfortunately, she's not very encouraging. You're getting dull, Ben. I'd hoped you went to Mobile to see a lady. No, sir. I saw no lady. That's a pity. John. People will be passing by here, Regina. I know. Why didn't you meet me last night? I couldn't. Why? Plantation folks giving balls again or fancy dress parties? I haven't been to a ball since I was 16 years old. When everybody gave parties to celebrate the opening of the war and say goodbye to us. I know. You've told me about it. Why couldn't you come? I couldn't leave Aunt Clara and Cousin Bertie. After supper, they wanted to sit out and talk. So they made you stay and keep them company? But they didn't make me. Would be better if you'd lied to me, said you were with another woman. Why should I lie? Because this way, not meeting me because of those two dried up mummies, it's just insulting. I like them, Regina. And they don't go around raising their voice in anger on Confederate Day. I don't want you to tell me about the difference in your family and mine on Confederate Day or any other day. I only said that I had to sit with Aunt Clara and Cousin Bertie last night. But they're lonely, Regina, and worried. It's the least I can do. After all, I've been living off them ever since the war. I got a good mind to sashay right up to that sacred plantation and tell them that the war's over. The old times are finished and so are they. Why, my papa could buy and sell Lionette in the same one, and it's cotton and it's women with it. I wouldn't like to hear anybody talk that way again. No, I wouldn't. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I give you my apology. I'm sorry. I, I was mad about last night because I had something special to tell you. I've got a wonderful plan. I've been thinking about it for months, and I've got Papa almost ready for it. I want you to meet him. I, I know you, Papa, honey, from the store. But I want you to come to our house. He's different at home. I thought your Papa didn't like to have people around. He don't. But I'll fix it. Will you come? Look, Regina, I... Say yes, darling. Please, please. I always do. No matter what I want or think, I always do.
you shouldn't have come here, Miss Fanny. I waited till everybody was gone, Coralie. Even so, you shouldn't have. Suppose he was to find out, like he did two years ago. Oh, I, I'm sure nobody saw me. How do you know? Somebody might be looking at you right this minute. Let's go, Miss Fanny. You go ahead. I'll catch up with you. You're going to be late for lunch. You don't want to be late today. Not on your birthday. I thought he'd give me the money first thing this morning. Come to my room, wish me a happy birthday. Yes, ma'am. Give it to me. You don't think he forgot? No, ma'am. We could build our hospital with that much money, couldn't we, Coralie? Yes, ma'am. A nice hospital. He promised, Coralie. On my last birthday, he promised. Don't worry, Miss Benny. I bet there's a big envelope waiting for you. Right this minute, under your napkin. A big, fat envelope. Twelve o'clock. Come on, Coralie, hurry. been salted, Mr. Hubbard. Where's the salt? I reckon I forgot it, sir. Go and get it. Yes, sir. Sit down, Lavinia. Why did you take the salt off the table? You know Marcus. No, I don't. It's Confederate Day, Papa. Mama never eats salt on Confederate Day. Thank you, Oscar. If you insist on acting crazy, that's your privilege. But I want salt on my table today and every day. Thank you, Papa. Salt, Oscar? Yes, sir. Pass it to your brother. Tastes fine to me as it is, Papa. Did you hear about the bag trees, Papa? That Mr. Taylor from Boston has given them a loan on Lioness. When did all this happen? Colonel Isham arranged for Taylor to meet the bag trees at the ceremony. The Yankee brass parading all over the memorial grounds, just like he owned the place. Is that where you saw him? No. I, uh, Papa, I heard about it down at the store. Lying again, Oscar? Poor Oscar's got one of those faces shows everything. You mind your own business. Oscar. Regina, please, children. Looks like now the bag trees can keep their gracious house, Papa, without even starving. Oh, I'm so glad for them. Clara Bagtree's had a hard time. How does that concern you? Well, it doesn't really, Marcus. I only... Where were you this morning, Lavinia? This morning? I... I went for a walk, Marcus. Where did you go? Just for a little walk. Where? Miss Regina. Here's Jake with your boxes. Jake! Jake, wait a minute. Oh, pretty boxes. What's in them? Dresses, silly. Set that police down, Jake. It's not seemly for a man to load his goods on other men, Benjamin. Slave or free. Five boxes full of dresses. And more coming next week. What are you going to do with them all, honey? Wear them. <laughs> you buying those clothes out of your lounge, Regina? Oh, aren't you silly now? How could I? Oh, they're charming, Papa. Wait till you see them. Oh, it's real pretty, Regina. I can help you try them on after lunch. Papa and I are going for a walk after lunch. Aren't we, darling? How much you spend, Regina? I don't know. I didn't even ask. Are you going real crazy? Acting like Miss Van Biltmore or whatever her name is? I'd like to find out. I'll have to pay the bills. You'll have to pay. Rich people up north don't act that way. They watch their money and their father's money. Oh, what do you know about it? Just the other day, those people in Chicago gave their daughter a $50,000 check for a trousseau. A trousseau? 
Is that what you've been buying? That reminds me, Regina. I met Horace Giddens in Mobile last evening. He was mighty disappointed you hadn't answered his letter about coming up here for another visit. I invite him to Papa's music evening tomorrow night. You didn't, I... You're 20 years old, honey. You ought to be settling down. You've been worrying us. Sashay in around oh, and open Oh, shut your mouth. Oscar's right. Isn't that so, Mom? What's this all about, Regina? I don't know, Papa. Nothing at all. Well, if you think there's nothing I at all... I told you to... once before, Oscar, shut your mouth. Shut! Why must we always be fighting like this? Why can't we have peace in our home the way a family should? Why can't we? Today of all days. Stop crying over your food, Lavinia. If you want it to remain unsalted. Happy birthday, Miss Benny. Oh, thank you, Coralie. Happy birthday, Miss Benny. Thank you, Jake. Happy birthday, Miss Benny. Thank you, Belle. Congratulations, Lavinia. Thank happy you, birthday, Mom. Congratulations, Mom. Really happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> well, cut it, dear. <laughs> Mama, the candles. Oh. <laughs> Haven't you better blow them out? Dan, you blow them out for me like you used to. All right, Mama. <laughs> Here's hoping a wedding cake will be next. What's that? Well, nothing, Papa. Just talking. Just talking nonsense, like always. Why? You can't have a wedding without a cake, honey. <laughs> you know that? A cake and a trousseau. I don't know what all this talk's about, spoiling Papa's day. Come on, darling. It's taken a nice long walk, just you and me. We haven't done that for a long time. Oh, no, not for a long time. <laughs> Something amuses you? Huh? Uh, no. Inform Horace Giddens that your sister does not wish to see him here tomorrow. Spend with profit your time today going over the store books. I'll bring my Aristotle. You'll read in English, I'll follow you in Greek. You get your books and I'll change my clothes. Marcus! You're not going now. It's my birthday, you promised. I promised? I promised what? You know, Marcus, you promised last year on my birthday. I'm going out now, Lavinia. Oh, Marcus, we have to start the hospital right away. We have to. We waited too long as it is. Another day, my dear. That's what you said last year. And the year before that, you said you were too busy. I'm still busy. Ben, take your police to your room. Never gonna learn, Ben. Been living with Papa for 31 years and never going to learn. Learn what, honey? Ben, you got a few dollars to lend me? You want some money? Just tell Papa Ben don't want you to have it. Uh, Look at it. Think so? For a man who wants to get somewhere, you're not a bit smart. You should have figured out long ago that Papa's going to do just whatever you tell him not to do. Unless I tell him to do it. You must give me a nice, long lecture on Papa, why he's so good to you, how you've managed, and so on. I'm busy now, taking him on a walk. Oh, no, not now. We'll wait for a long winter night before the fire. I'll sit opposite you, you'll talk, and I'll listen. And I'll think many things, like how you used to be a beauty. <laughs> but at 40, your face got worn and sour. Papa'll still be around, and he'll interrupt us the way he does now and call for you to come and put him to bed. And you'll get up and go, wondering how the years went by. Because he's most devoted to you. And he's going to keep you right here with him all his long life. Oh, no, Ben. I'm going away. I'm going to Chicago. And once I get... He's uh, consented to the trip? He will, by the time we're back from our walk. You'll never get out of this house. Not unless you take my advice. I'll make out all right. I always have. Horace Giddens is in love with you. It's good society, that family, and rich. Solid, quiet rich. Want me to marry money for you? <laughs> of course I want you to marry money. Why don't you take it up with Papa? I wouldn't like to be in the house the day you do. 
Or the day he hears the gossip about you and John Bagtree. Shut up, Ben. Or is uh, Bagtree going to Chicago, too? Look, Ben, don't start anything. I'll get you in trouble if you do. Real bad trouble. What is it, Oscar? Have you come to borrow a book? A book? Yeah, I didn't suppose so. You don't favor reading, do you? Well, I would, Papa, only um, Ben keeps me so busy at the store it's that... It's time outside the store, if you weren't the laziest man in town. Ben don't read either. Should I be pleased at having two ignorant sons instead of one? <laughs> oh, what I mean, Papa, uh, he keeps driving me all the time. Not only at the store, he's always bossing me around. Never lets me do what I want. How can he stop you? I need five dollars for some. Five measly old dollars. You think he'd lend it to me? Maybe he don't have it. Uh, Papa, I, uh, I, I, I gotta go out tonight. It's very important. Uh, I give my word of honor as a gentleman. That... Are you a gentleman, Oscar? Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, well. Has uh, Taylor given the money to the bag trees already? I don't think so, Papa. I don't know. Didn't you hear them at the ceremony? Honest, Papa, I wasn't there. I heard about the loan in town. I know you don't want us to go to the ceremony, and I wouldn't... They wouldn't let me stay. But they didn't object to Taylor's presence. That's what I said. And so you let yourself be disgraced in front of a Yankee. Oh, I'm not finished with him. Not by a long shot. I got a good mind to ride over to his place carrying a gun. Spoken like a true gentleman, Oscar. I may not be a gentleman, but I'm a southerner, Papa. And when I see an old carpetbagger coming down here, I mean to do something about it. Go on about your business. Let Ben take care of the store this afternoon. Squee, Papa. Thank you. And when you see Taylor, try to remember that though ignorance becomes a southern gentleman, cowardice does not. Yes, sir. Come to the store, Oscar? Uh-uh. But you are. I was just about to help Coralie clear the table. That's all right, son. You made me very happy coming home for my birthday. I... Yes, Mom. Ben, do you think we might just you and me for Belle's sake? You know how she is about her bacon. All right, Mom. I've got to get along down in the store. Well, it won't take a minute. Here's a piece cut right here. You sit down there, Ben. Now, I'll have to have another plate. No salt, eh? Good thing he didn't taste it. I can't help it, Ben. There's got to be one little thing you want to do that nobody keeps you from. Why'd you pick this day, Mama? Because it's your birthday or because it's Confederate Day? I don't like to talk about it, Ben. Why? Everybody in the county knows Papa made all his money selling salt during the war. But they don't know it was my fault. Our people were dying for salt and... I thought it would be a kindness for him to run the blockade and bring it to him. Only I didn't think he'd be charging eight dollars a bag for it. Uh -huh. A tiny little one pound bag. Making money out of other people's misery. When I found out, I... I wanted to go back to the piney woods. Leave him and... Go back home. Why didn't you? Why don't you now? There's nothing I'd want more to do. Why don't you, then? Marriage is a pledge, Ben. A pledge.
promise, for better or for worse, a Christian woman has a duty to that promise. A woman has a duty to other things, too. That's right. To her conscience. But her duty to her husband comes first. Papa! I'm ready, darling. Did you have a pleasant trip, Ben? No. Unsuccessful. I didn't get my money any more than you got yours. Oh, but I will, Ben. Your father promised. And when I get it, I'll let you have a little just as you'd share with me, wouldn't you, son? You'd give me money from a hospital if you had it, wouldn't you? Of course, Mom. Only Papa don't want me to have money. And he don't want you to build a hospital. Oh, no, Ben, he does. He knows I have to. Before this day's over, he'll come and give me the money. You'll see. Yes, Mom. Yes, he'll come. And he'll be nice and gentle with you. As nice and gentle as he can be. And he'll tell you that you're going to Chicago with Regina. Is Regina going to Chicago? Not if you refuse to go with her. Chicago? It's so far away. They have good doctors in Chicago. Is Regina sick? No. Then why? If somebody were to tell a doctor that a person was acting funny, was frightened all the time, had crying spells for no reason, strange quirks like not using salt on certain days. Don't go, Mama. But I have reasons, Ben, good reasons. And it's not just making money out of salt. I could tell the doctor how... What, Mama? What could you tell the doctor? Because there's plenty Regina could tell him. If you say no, Mama, they can't make you go. Ben! I just wanted to show you what you're paying for. How do I look, honey? Bright and shiny, honey. Like a nice new two-bit piece. Regina, you look beautiful. Marcus. Let's go, darling. Marcus. Now that we have spoken of the virtues, the forms of friendship, and the varieties of pleasure, what remains is to discuss in outline the nature of happiness since this is what we state the end of human nature to be. You aren't following me, Papa. Happiness, friendship. I haven't been richly blessed with friends, always sons. My eldest, a penny grubbing trickster, and my second, a proud illiterate. Strange, Regina. You turned out to be my only son. Someday I'd like to take you to Greece. Greece? We might even settle down there. Think of it, Regina. To read Aristotle in the shadow of the Parthenon. Wouldn't you like to go? I don't know, Papa. I'm afraid I might get homesick. Homesick? <laughs> For a collection of yokels held together by a few strands of cotton and a common defeat? It's the only place I know. I've never been farther away than Mobile. Mobile. You'd rather stay where you can be near Horace Giddens. That's what you mean, isn't it? You know better than that, Papa. Ben thinks up one of his schemes to annoy you and Oscar chimes in like he always does. I'm not thinking about Giddens. I don't even like him. I'm sorry, darling. Such a nice afternoon, and now you've spoiled it all. I said I was sorry. Of course, I could try if you want me to. Try what? 
going on a trip. Maybe I might like it. Maybe I won't miss this place one little bit. And where would you like to go? I didn't say I would like to go. I said I could try. Mobile? Papa, you're awful. You started this conversation. I wasn't even thinking about going away. Where would you want to go? Answer me, Regina. I don't want to go. I told you I'd much rather stay here. I want you to go. All right, Papa, if you say so. Where to? That's what you're going to tell me this minute. I really don't know. Someplace up north? Of course. You'll love the north. Philadelphia for music? New York for theater? Boston for literature? Which shall it be? Whatever you say, Papa. Of course, they do make beautiful dresses in Chicago. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, here it is. Now that we have spoken of the virtues, the forms of friendship, and the varieties of pleasure, what remains is to discuss in outline the nature of happiness. Mm. Squee, you're so rough. It's only because I love you, Loretta. I can't live without you. All day long, I keep thinking of you. Don't go, Loretta. I have to work now. I don't want you dancing in front of a lot of men. I want you for myself. I want you to be my wife. I'm deeply and sincerely in love. We can't eat on deeply and sincerely. Look, Lorette, I'm going to ask Papa for a loan. And I'll be able to go to New Orleans with you. Then you'd marry me, Lorette, wouldn't you? You've asked me that 20 times in the last year. But you ain't never once asked your Papa for the loan. Hi, Charlie. Oh, I, I, I'm terribly sorry. Give me, miss. It was my fault. Allow me. Oh, that's all right. But look at poor you. Oh, no, no, it's nothing. Nothing at all. You're awfully nice. Lorette. Listen. Tomorrow's your night off, ain't it? Yes, why? I'll meet you at nine. With the money. Papa asked me to... I can't tell you what, but I give you my word as a gentleman. I'll see you when I'm through. Why may not be here? There's something I gotta do, Lorette, for us, for our future. Eight percent Taylor. Look at him, the dirty carpetbagger. Drink up, boys.
better go to bed, Miss Vanny. You've done enough waiting for one day. You think he's not coming, don't you? Go to bed, Miss Vanny. I will right away. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire. But Lot's wife looked from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning. Shh. You see, Coralie, you were wrong, and Ben was wrong. Go to bed, Coralie. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Mr. Hubbard. Good night, Coralie. Good night, Miss Ben. I saw the light was on, and I came to wish you a good night. I was waiting for you. Go to Miss Mercer's in the morning and order yourself a new dress. Tell her I said so. Why, thank you, Marcus, but this one's still good enough. Good enough for Bowdoin, but not for a big city. You're going to Chicago, Lavinia, with Regina. What? What'd you say? I'm sending Regina to Chicago. You'll be going with her. Good night, Lavinia. Marcus! Marcus, please! I don't want to go. Please, Marcus, let me go back to the Piney Woods. Marcus, please. What's the matter with you? Are you completely out of your head? I, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings at lunch today, but you know I... Now, stop it, Lavinia. Go to Miss Mercer's in the morning. I don't want Regina to be ashamed of you in Chicago. Marcus. Good morning, Papa. See what cotton loans or mortgage payments are doing today. I'll be needing some cash. For me or for Regina's trip? You talking about me, honey? Morning, Papa. Morning, darling. Good morning, honey. Looks like your walk was successful. Did you send word to Horace Giddens not to come here tonight? No. I told you I don't want that man here. I never invited him. <laughs> Time you were down to store. That's right, Ben. Work real hard. I'm going to need a lot of cash. Colonel Isham is here, sir. Can he come out now? If he's capable of walking. Coralie, where's Miss Lavinia? Miss Lavinia's still in bed, sir. She's feeling poorly this morning. Regina. Colonel Isham. You'll forgive this too early visit. I was asked to come to see you. To talk about bad cotton? No, sir. I don't mix with a man's breakfast to talk about cotton. I came about your son, Oscar. Then you'll need coffee. Coralie. Thank you, no. Last night... People like you don't drink coffee with people like me. I've had my coffee. Now, Mr. Hubbard... Then come again when you haven't had it. Thank you. Mr. Hubbard, there's dangerous feeling in the community this morning. I've come to talk to you for your own good. If there's one thing I've never liked, Colonel, it's conversations for my own good. Last night, Mr. Sam Taylor was badly beaten up. Eight people identified one of the night Riders as your son, Oscar. Benjamin, rope Oscar and bring him out here. Oscar! Sounds like Papa wants you. What you been up to this time? You'll find out. Better put some clothes on. He's got company. So I was right about the trip to Chicago. I don't want to go, Ben. Mighty clever of you, Mama. Getting sick just at this time. I don't know what you mean, Ben. My knees so bad, I can hardly move. Of course it is, Mom. And I hope you feel better real soon. But not too soon. Oscar! You know very well there's not a man in these parts who wouldn't enjoy swinging up a Hubbard. Next to the traitor who murdered our boys, you Hubbards are the best hated family in the county. 
It seems Colonel Isham has just saved you from a lynching party. Should I thank him? Yes, Papa. Thank you very much, Colonel Isham. Lynching? Well, Colonel Isham, what did I do? Why should anybody want to lynch me? I don't want to speak with you. Who does? Samuel Taylor's a gentleman. This affair's a disgrace to the entire South. But, Papa, you... Do I have to tell you that if you ever put on those robes again and take a gun to any man... Yeah, uh, no, Papa. Your son also rode down a waiter, Jed Phillips, from the Cairo Gardens. He's badly hurt. Got no money for treatment. Won't be able to work for a long time. I wasn't riding with the clan, boys. Honest. I was thinking about it, but I give you my word as a gentleman. He couldn't have been with him. As a matter of fact, he was here with me all evening. Reading. Are you willing to go against eight people who recognized your brother? Well, Oscar looks like anybody. Here, count out $500 for Colonel Asham. Go away, Oscar. Yes, sir. Please use the money for the waiter. Tell him that my other son, Benjamin, wishes to make amends. Ben has a most charitable nature. We'll take care of him, Hubbard. You won't take care of him because you can't. Learn to be poor, Asham. It has more dignity. There's no need for so much. A hundred would be more proper. Don't give me lectures on propriety. Good day, Mr. Hubbard. And when you see Taylor... Mr. Taylor left and he's not coming back. Then when you write to him, Colonel, you might tell him that Marcus Hubbard warned you 15 years ago you were fools to let Klansmen ride around carrying guns. Were you frightened of their riding on you? Good day, Colonel. It's, uh, it's too bad about Taylor. Ain't it, Papa? Go to the store, Benjamin. Of course, now that he's gone, they'll all be coming to you for money. <laughs> $500. Not a bad investment. I wasn't lying, I should ask his sake. This is a mighty big temptation to a man that allows himself six dollars for a trip to Mobile. Perhaps you're stingy. You can't be much else on a salary of twenty dollars a week. Is that all I pay you? Oh, well. You'll be better off when I... When you what, Papa? When and if I die. But I may not die. Did I tell you, Benjamin? Good day, Miss Quinn. Good day. Look. Why don't they go away? Get me a piece of rosin, Oscar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For your violin, Papa? You're not leaving, are you? Didn't you want to talk to me or something? Talk to you? I never have. Ah, uh, the money you gave me yesterday, I've put it to good use. You mean a little, uh... Salary advance, I made you? That's right. Uh, a little advance against a little raise. How much you drawing here now? Sixteen a week. Here after five dollars will go to repay me for the five hundred. You'll draw eleven. What five hundred? The five hundred I gave to Isham, who so graciously saved you from a rope. <laughs> but Papa, you can't. Eleven a week. Stop whining, Oscar. It'll only take you a hundred weeks to make it up. But but Papa, but you told me yourself. A hundred and one, Ben. Including the money I advanced you yesterday. Good morning, gentlemen. Papa's sure hard on me. It's unnatural. Why, well, if a stranger come in, he'd think Papa didn't like me. His own son. Why'd you beat him up? He's a no good. Carpetbagger. All right. Let's try again. Why'd you beat up Taylor? Did he tell you to? When? 
yesterday in his library. He even gave me five dollars. And you stand here and let Papa bully you? <laughs> Why don't you realize you got him by the throat? Well, what do you mean, Ben? What do you mean? What did he say to you? Well, I said that Taylor... What did he say? His exact words. He said, um, a southern gentleman should ignore danger. What else? Well, I don't know. That's all, I guess. You clown. Ben, help me, please. I can't live on $11 a week. I want to get married. I'm deeply and sincerely in love. You go give yourself a nice, cool, and sponge bath. Well, good morning. Oh, Mr. Benjamin. What can I do for you, Miss Birdie? Oh, I'm sorry to worry, Mr. Benjamin. I'll, I'll just take a few minutes. You see, I, I only got a few minutes. If, if Mama and Cousin John knew where I was, they'd, they'd just about die. <laughs> Isn't that so, Mr. Benjamin? What is it you want to talk to me about, Miss Birdie? Well, I, I really came to see your father, but... Well, I'm glad you're the one who's here. We tried very hard, and Mr. Taylor finally said he would do it, but... Well, he's gone now, and nobody else seems to want cotton. I don't understand that. I, I thought people always wanted cotton. They will again, Miss Birdie. In about 50 years. Oh. 50 years. Well, I... I guess we, we can't wait that long. The truth is, Mr. Benjamin, we can't pay or support our people. We can't. Would you, I mean your father and you, would you lend us money on, on our land or cotton or... You say you don't want your mama to know you've come here? Oh, no. No, she didn't forgive me. She'd rather die. To think you had to come to us? I, I didn't mean that. I, I'm so sorry. You haven't offended me, Miss Birdie. I only ask because you don't own Lionel. Your mama does. But you don't want your mama to know about the loan. And so, who would sign for it? I would. Oh. Oh, you mean you can't sign for what you don't own? Oh, I see. I, I hadn't thought of that. Oh, I, I'm such a ninny. Now I'll have to tell Mama about Mr. Taylor going away. She... She spent all day yesterday planning how she was going to pay off all her people and give Cousin John the car fare. And car fare? He wants to go away. Oh? To uh, Chicago, perhaps? Oh, no. There's no war going on in Chicago. I beg your pardon? A war. He wants to go back to war. He's so unhappy here. I see. Where will Captain Bagley find a war? Well, there's something going on in Brazil, John says. He, he looked it up in the newspapers and he has a map. Brazil? Is there a nice war going on in Brazil? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Forgive me for bothering you, Mr. Benjamin. I, I shouldn't have. Good day, Mr. Benjamin. How much of a loan were you thinking about, Miss Birdie? Five thousand dollars. Oh, I guess I was as foolish 5, about that. Five thousand. Perhaps I could find some way to accommodate you. A promise from you in a letter. Oh, could you, Mr. Benjamin? Oh, of course, I'd be glad to promise anything. You understand that first I'll have to convince my father. Oh. Tonight he has his music evening with musicians up from Mobile to play with him and flatter him. He's always in good humor after his music. Why don't you come, Miss Birdie, and invite Captain Bagtree to escort you? Oscar! Well, I'll be most pleased. Thank you very much. I'll do my best for you. Well, hello there, Miss Birdie. Oscar, don't you want to walk Miss Birdie home? Oh, no. No, thank you for your courtesy, Mr. Benjamin, and, and thank you, Mr. Oscar. <laughs> what are you trying to do, Ben? Take her home. Be nice to her, you hear me? Take her home yourself. I don't like her. If something works right for me, I'll lend you the 500 to pay Papa back. Squee, Ben! Go on, take her home. Be charming. 500 possible dollars, charm. 
Oh, Miss Birdie. Miss Birdie. If I'm not interrupted, I will be. I just wanted to tell you, I invited Miss Bagtree and Captain Bagtree to your concert. The Bagtrees? Thought you'd enjoy having a quality folk here. Come to beg a favor of you. You teasing me? No. <laughs> I saw Miss Brady a while ago. Now that Taylor's been persuaded to leave, she wants us to lend her money on the cotton. With Lionette as collateral? Mm -hmm. Of course, her mama don't know and mustn't find out. What kind of nonsense is that? The girl don't own the place. Maybe it's not nonsense. Take a note from her. When her mama dies, she'll be the one who... You're very it. concerned with people dying, aren't you? <laughs> Forgive me. I keep forgetting how that word disturbs you. It's the thing you've been waiting for. The Bagtree's coming to you for a loan. I'll wait some more. Till Miss Bagtree comes herself. Hmm? A loan would make them happy, make us money. Make the Bagtrees grateful to us. Of course, I don't know anything about business, Papa, but... it's been kind of lonely here with nobody nice having much to do with us. Small loss, darling. Well, I would like to know somebody young. A girl my own age, I mean. Like Miss Birdie Bagtree? You can be that lonely. What's the matter with you, Regina? Nothing, Papa. Only it'd be nice to have a few people here to listen to your music. Is that so awful to want? Bag trees in this house, begging. How much does this Betty want? Seven thousand. A lioness? Well, seven thousand's cheap. That girl's a fool. Most girls are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm awaiting your opinion, gentlemen. Judgment of music like the inspiration for it must come slow and measured if it comes with truth. Would you like to try it? By all means. Now, where did I leave my cello? You're the only man I've ever met who can mislay a cello. Look beside you. Papa, you're not going to start without our guests. And why not? We don't want them to think we're impolite. For $7,000, they'll think we're most polite. Mama to get sick. The first time in years we're expecting company. Let's hope she's well in time for your trip. But I promised, Mama. I promised Loretta I'd be there with the money. She's waiting for me right now. Mama, what shall I tell her? Tell her the truth, son. If she loves you, she won't mind. You don't understand, Mama. How can I marry without money? I did. We were very poor, Oscar, back in the Piney Woods. Poor as church mice. And I reckon the mice in your grandfather's church were the poorest mice in the whole south. But I don't think they mind it. I know we didn't. Nine o'clock. Mama, what am I going to do? Could I talk to you? I got a friend waiting for me, Miss Lorette Cincy. You see, Papa, I'm in love, deeply and sincerely. But Ben, he keeps talking her down. Ben don't want me to be happy. Isn't that too bad? Your own brother. It's a shame. 
Of course, she is of the lower classes, a ballet dancer at the Cairo Gardens. A what dancer? Can-can. But that don't matter to me. I always say it's not how people were born, but what they are. You always say that. Well, some people are Democrats by choice, some by necessity. You by necessity. She's a wonderful girl. I'm most anxious for you to meet her. Could I go fetch her here? Could I, Papa? What is this, a night at the circus? Please, Papa, this ain't asking too much after what I've done for you. What have you done? Nothing, Papa. Nothing. But it might amuse you having a member of the lower classes mixing with the gentry. And it'd make Ben awful mad. Go and get her. Be back in a couple of minutes. Going to fetch Lorette. Bring her here. Here. You can't bring that coach girl here. Can't I? Well, just ask Papa. Stop him, Ben. What do you want me to do? Shoot him? Too old to run down streets after men in love. He can't bring her here. The bag trees will think we meant to do it. Plan to insult him. Yes, I'm sure they will. What's the matter with Papa? One of these days, you're going to learn about Papa. Maybe tonight, when he sees you with John Bagby. If you dare say anything to Papa about John, I'll... Don't threaten me. I'm sick of threats. You'll be much sicker of them if I... Ben, don't. I'm in love with John. But he's not in love with you. Horace Giddens is. Why don't you marry money yourself? Nobody ever asked me. Why, Ben, any rich girl would be only too happy to have a bookkeeper as good as you. Why, thank you, honey. You're welcome, honey. What a charming picture. What do you do whispering about? I don't understand you're letting Oscar bring that girl here. Why? It might be amusing for an hour. There's no need for you to offend our guests. Why are you so concerned about the bag trees? I'm not. It's just that... Oh, Papa. And when you speak to Papa, tell him how much you like music. And how you stay up nights, reading. What's that to say about it? Well, I know. He's fond of Mozart. Talk about Mozart. Oh, but I can't do that. I don't even know what Mozart is. Well, Mozart... Well, just do your best to please him. And soon we'll have our own little place in New Orleans, and I'll find me a job. I know a girl in New Orleans. She has a little embroidery shop on Royal Street. Oh, Oscar, it's what I've always wanted to do. Fancy embroidery. Well, you won't. Why, Oscar? I like doing it. Well, no wife of mine is going to work. That's final. Uh, wait a minute, Oscar. How come your papa let you bring me here tonight? Well, now, don't you worry your head. Pretend nobody knows anything about you. Pretend you're just as good as anybody else. Pretend? Pretend I'm as good as anybody Cole Hubbard? Well, my pa died in Vicksburg. He didn't stay home bleeding the whole state with money tricks. I didn't mean anything bad. I think you're better than anybody. Well, I ain't better than anybody. But I'm just as good as any scalloway. Shh, <laughs> honey, please. Sometimes you bring out the worst in my nature, Oski. You make me talk foolish. All right. I'll be very good and nice. I would like a little house in New Orleans. Of course you would. With me. You do love me, don't you, honey? Tell me you love me. Oscar, you know this ain't the time and place for much. <laughs> My apologies, John. We don't always arrange this scene for our guests. Well, we were just... Uh, I was... All right, Oscar. Take your lady inside. How do, John? Evening, Lorette. Everything's arranged, John. I've talked Pop into letting me go to Chicago. You'll come with me, and we'll be married there. When Papa finds out, he'll have a fit, of course. Now, wait a minute, honey. I... 
You don't want to marry me? You don't ask that seriously. Answer me, please. No, I... I don't. I never said I did. I don't want to say these things, but... I don't want to lie, either. John, come to Chicago with me. We'll be alone. I've never pleaded for anything in my life before. I might hold it against you. Regina, don't speak of pleading. I'm no good for you. I, I was only good once in a war. Some men should never come back from war. You'll go away. By the time you come back, you'll be in love with somebody else, and I'll be in Brazil. Oh, I got a letter from Card Carter. There's a war down there. Brazil? Yes, Bertie's getting some money. She won't tell me how, but she says she's going to have enough to run Lionette and for me to borrow a little. I can leave right away. Where's Miss Bertie getting this money? Well, she won't tell me, but she says she'll have $5,000 this week. $5,000? You'd better go in now. Aren't you coming? Not just yet. We'll talk about it tomorrow. I love you now. Go on in. just to play music. Your father's a very cultured gentleman. He is indeed. You will make the loan $5,000. Oh, that's wonderful. Would you take my advice about something? Don't speak to my father about the loan. But I... It's all arranged. And he's a man of such culture, as you say, that talk of money might disturb him. Uh, on his music, even. Oh, oh, of course. We'll meet tomorrow, you and I, and work out the details. Oh, you won't have any trouble with me, Mr. Ben. I'm sure of that. <laughs> Jasky, it don't mean anything. Shh, Lorette. Papa, let me add some brandy. That might make it mean a little more. Papa, my friend's here now. Can you meet her? By all means. Lorette. This is Miss Cincy, Papa. How do you do? Finally, thank you. Uh, Lorette just loves music. Don't you, Lorette? Yes, indeed. Uh, I, I had an uncle who played. He taught me to love music. Did he play the violin, too, like Papa? No, Oscar. What did he play? Hmm? He had a little drum. He loved Mozart. You told me, remember? Yes, yeah, sure did. Miss Cincy pleases me. Her uncle played Mozart, gentlemen, on a little drum. <laughs> Have you ever heard of that, Miss Bagtree? Well, uh, I haven't, but I'm sure there must be such an arrangement. That's very kind of you, to be sure. You play any instrument, Miss Bagtree? Uh, not well. The piano a little. I had a German teacher. Where did you study? Berlin? Vienna? Oh, no. No, right here in Bowdoin. I've, I've never been abroad, but John has. He made the grand tour, you know. I didn't know. Have, have you ever been abroad to Europe, Mr. Hubbard? No, but I intend to go with my daughter. Perhaps you'd advise us, Captain Bagtree. My daughter and I are planning a trip abroad. Well, I'd like to, sir, but I, I don't remember Europe very well. Something unpleasant took it from your mind? No, sir, I just don't remember. It's as if I'd never been there. People usually remember what made them happy, isn't that true? Well, I've never thought much about it, sir. Well, let's think about it now. What is it stays in your memory, Captain Bagtree? Anything at all? The war. And you must have been happy in the war, were you? Yes, sir. I thought we'd win. I never did. Never. From the first foolish talk to the last foolish day. I'm most sorry. 
I speak the truth whenever I can. Oh, John doesn't mind. It's, it's just that it was always hard for us to understand anyone who thought we'd lose. It's still hard for a soldier to understand. There, you see. Once a soldier, always a soldier. <laughs> Why, John wants to go to Brazil right now. The radical people down there are trying to abolish slavery, Mr. Hubbard, and ruin the country. The planters have been looking for Confederate officers. So John will have a chance to fight again for his ideals. Why don't you choose the other side? Every man needs to win once in his life. I don't like that way of saying it. I fight for a way of life. Refreshments, Captain? Come, gentlemen. Have a little more to eat. You disapprove of me, Captain? I'm in your house, sir, and you forced me into this kind of talk. Well, I disapprove of you. Your people deserve to lose their war and their world. It was a backward world, getting in the way of history. <laughs> Appalling that you still don't realize it. I didn't bring John here to listen to you lecture and be nasty and insulting. You brought him here. John. Come, Regina. When I'm ready, Papa. I'm sorry, John. Why should you be sorry? It's the way you feel, too. I always look forward to my evenings here. I tell my wife Miss Lavinia is a rare housekeeper. It's a shame she couldn't be with us tonight. It's... It's time to go, Bertie. Not yet, John. We can't. Don't have words with him, please. You enjoy good wine, Mr. Penniman? Yes, sir. Don't trust the man who do. No, thank you. A very gifted musician, your father, eh, Mr. Benjamin? I know nothing of music. Why do people always sound so proud when they announce they know nothing of music? Miss Cincy? Lorette, don't. You have a reason for not joining us? Did you agree to make Ben's loan on Lionette? Ben's loan? Of course I'll make it. It's good for me and bad for them. It's got nothing to do with Ben. How much did he say Miss Bertie had asked for? $7,000. Why does this interest you? Don't make the loan, Papa. I don't like the girl. I think she's come here tonight to make fun of us. That's not true. And I don't think you think it is. You're lying to me about something, Regina. It hurts me. Tell me why you stayed out here with that man. Why you called him John? Bagtree doesn't know where the money's coming from, but the girl told him she was getting $5,000 this week. 5000 not seven. I'd like to bet the extra two's going to buy shares in Birmingham Coal. You're getting older, Papa, and tired. And maybe you're getting too careless about Ben. That's enough, Regina. <laughs> He says. <laughs> Is there any effective way of stopping this? <laughs> Tell you a secret. Oscar says he wants to marry little old Lorette. And does little old Lorette think that's fortunate? <laughs> sometimes yes, sometimes no. This may sound very rude, but I have a nervous dislike of being grabbed. Oh, show sure, me too. Let's not know about it beforehand. That reminds me, I'm told you work for a living. That's good. Oscar is not a rich man. <laughs> rich? How could he be? On that stinking slave salary you pay him. That's how come you're sure to repent and help us, Oscar says. After all, when you die, you're going to leave it to him anyway. So why not now, Oscar says? Oscar is a liar. Always has been. And he steals a little. Nothing much. Not enough to be respectable. That's not true. It's just not true. If you want him, Miss Lorette, do have him. Come on, Lorette. I'll settle this later. Papa talking about his own son. 
No animal would talk about the sun that way. Come on, Lorette. I've been hearing tales about you since the day I was born. How you got rich, bringing in salt and making poor dying people give up everything for it. And right in the middle of the wall, men dying for you. You're making the kinfolk give you all their goods and money, you old crook. Oscar, take this girl out of here. And then come back, quickly. More punch? Anyone? No? Good night, Miss Regina. John, I... John. Good night, sir. You came to beg a favor and you stayed to be amused. Good night. Came to beg a favor? From you? Oh, in this county, I'd be so dishonored. John. If you were not an old man, Mr. There's Hubbard, I... There's never so great a hero as the man who fought on the losing side. John. Don't tell me to... Stop it. Go outside. Wait for me in the carriage. I don't want you here. Come on, Bertie. I want to stay for a few minutes. Please go outside. I... Please. Please. <laughs> Mr. Hubbard, I'm, I'm sorry. Your family and mine, I was hoping we could all be nice friends. Your mother hasn't bowed to me in 15 years. Does she wish to be my nice friend now? I didn't come tonight just for the loan. I, I wanted to come. It was a big holiday for me. I, I, I tried to get all dressed up in Mama's old things. I... Then it's a shame you troubled yourself because I have bad news for you. I've decided not to make the loan. Why? Why? You said yourself that... I'll tell you in time. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Please come another night just for the music. Without a motive. Well, look, Mr. Hubbard, I'll do anything. We have a little silver left, couldn't Miss I? Miss Bertie, please spare us both. I was planning to use the first money to buy molasses and sugar. All that land and cotton and we're starving. Everybody with cotton is starving. That isn't what I mean. I mean starving. I'm sorry to have told you these things about us, you, you lose your manners when you're poor. Thank you, Mr. Ben. I, I know you acted as my good friend. Well, shall we proceed with the music, Mr. Hubbard? That'll be all for this evening. You gave a careless performance. Good night. Careless performance? What do you know about music? Nothing. And we're just here to pretend that you do. Glad to make a little money once a month. Hush, Jugger. Well, I won't do it anymore. You hear me? Oh, he, he don't mean that. He, he's just he's just tired. Well, we're just as happy to come here as... as uh, see you next month, sir, just as usual? Hmm? Oh, looks like, like we're in for a little rain. Good night. I didn't intend for you to insult the bag trees and make enemies of them. The bag trees have been my enemies for years. Why should that suddenly disturb you? <laughs> You're amused? Yes, I'm amused. All right. Enjoy yourself for a few minutes. Trying to ruin my life, are you? Pouring liquor down her and getting her drunk on purpose. <laughs> Come on outside and fight it out like a man. Oh, shut up. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? We bring Lorette here to get Ben mad. Then he gets her drunk and you get mad. That's just what he wanted you to do. The joke's kind of on you. <laughs> You're full of tricks these days. Like the bag tree loan. A girl borrows $7,000 from me and you keep 2000 and take your chances on nobody finding out. Bagdra told you, huh? <laughs> your nasty little games bore me. You're a clerk in my store and that you'll remain. But if you anger me once more, there won't be any job and you won't be here. Is that clear? Very clear. Papa, you wouldn't condemn a woman just because she has to earn a living by the sweat of her brow. 
At nine years old, I was carrying water for two bits a week. I took the first dollar I ever had and went to the paying library to buy a cart. When I was 12, I was working out in the fields. And that same year, I taught myself Latin and French. At 14, I was driving mules all day and most of the night. But that was the year I learned my Greek, read my classics, taught myself. Think what I must have wanted for sons. And then think what I got. If you want to go away with this can-can girl, what's detaining you? Your permission, sir. Talk sense. You mean money? Just a loan. And we'd ship on down to New Orleans. How much? Ten thousand to start me off fine, Papa. There'll be one thousand dollars for you on that table by six in the morning. Get on the early train. Send a Christmas card each year to an aging parent who now wishes you to stop talking. You better start packing, Oscar. You've bullied me ever since I was born. But before I leave, you're going to do what I tell you. You're going to be on that station platform tomorrow morning and apologize to Lorette. Goodness, what a thousand dollars won't do. And if you're not ready on time... Put that gun away! Go to your room. I'll see you at the station. You've always been frightened of guns, Papa. Any particular reason? You're wearing me thin, Benjamin. Why don't you stop it, both of you? You can do all the squabbling you want to after Mom and I leave for Chicago. It'll be lonely here without you. I don't know. Maybe I should come with you. With me, but I thought... Don't you want me to? Of course, only I didn't... Only you didn't plan on such a crowded honeymoon. Well, don't look so surprised, Papa. You guessed about Bagley an hour ago. Ben! Of course, I don't think he wants to marry. I don't think he even wants any more. But he's a weak man, and Regina... Don't listen to him, Papa. I've seen John. I told you that. I like him, yes. But don't you see what Ben is up to? He wants to marry me off to Horace Giddens, and he's mad because I... Papa, what's the matter with you? You look so bad. You do look bad. Oh, go up to him, Regina. Put your arms around him. Lie to him like you always do. Tell him you never really loved him. Ben! I'll never forget that. As long as I live. Ben! Pack your things and go. And be sure you go far. Get yourself a modest job. Because wherever you are, I'll see to it that you never get anything better. Marcus! Ben! Ben! Ben, wait for me, Ben! When did it happen? How could you... Why don't you answer? Dead man. Foolish man from an idiot world. A man who wants nothing but war, any war, just a war. A man who believes in nothing and never will. A man in space. That's all true, Papa, and I know it. And I'm in love with him and I want to marry him. Oh, now, don't take on so... You just let me go away as we planned, and after a while, John and I will come home and we'll live right here. Are you crazy? Do you think I'd stay in this house with... Otherwise, a... I'll go away and I'll stay away. You'll never see me again. I don't think you could stand that. You must have known I'd marry someday, Papa. Before you know it, I'll be home again and it'll be all over. Maybe next year or the year after, you and I'll make that trip to Greece, just the two of us. Now it's all settled. Kiss me goodnight, darling. Can 
Can you hear me, Oscar? No way, Mama. No way. Regina, talk to your father. Don't let him do this. We'll be leaving for Chicago sooner than I thought, Mama. No, Regina, I don't want to go. We'll start getting ready first thing in the morning. Good night, Mama. <laughs> And then away, he's your son. Your firstborn. The family has to hold together. Leave me alone. I don't feel well. If... If you'll let Ben stay, I'll go to Chicago. I'll do anything you say. I... I'll go see a doctor. Please, Lavinia, stop your jabbering. Marcus, I said I'd go to Chicago. Of course you'll go to Chicago. You'll let Ben stay. It isn't easy to live with you, Lavinia. It really isn't. I know. For a long time now, I felt that being here... Well, it... It made me feel like I was sinning. You have to make good your sins before you die. That's why the hospital... Stop your crazy talk, Lavinia. I don't like that word, Marcus. It frightens me. And you know it. I'll go to Chicago, but only if you let Ben stay. Goodbye, Mama. I put the rest of my stuff in the ironing room. I'll send for it when I find a place. Where are you going? Don't go, Ben. I'm a clerk here, and I've been fired. If you go, I'll go, too. Marcus, tell Ben to stay. Tell your son this is his house. Marcus, it's a sin, a terrible sin. The Lord will destroy this place. With brimstone and fire, he will destroy it. I must go out of this house. Go out then, Mama. Don't look back. Or you'll turn into a pillar of salt. And he'll sell you. Eight dollars a pound. I never did look back. For 16 years, I forced myself not to. Look back at what, Mama? I promised myself I wouldn't. And I never did because I made vows in church when we married. And because I... I've always been afraid of you, Marcus. But you're not afraid of me. No. Yes, I... I've been afraid of you, too. I spend a life afraid. And that's funny, because deep down, I... I'm a woman who wasn't made to be afraid. What are most people afraid of? Well, like you, Marcus, they're afraid of dying. But I'm not afraid to die. And if you're not afraid of that, then you're not afraid of anything, not even of looking the truth in the face or speaking the truth. What truth, Mama? Don't force me to look back, Marcus. Will you let Ben stay? Marcus. All right. It was my birthday, Ben. And your papa had been gone three days on one of his salt running trips. Yes, Mama. He'd promised to be back for my birthday, but the day had gone by, and I was afraid something had happened to him. I knew he had no pass through the Yankee lines. So that night... The night of the massacre, Mama? I threw a shawl over my shoulders, and I walked to the memorial grounds. Come upstairs, Lavinia. But there were no memorial grounds then, Mama. That's right, son, just the clearing in the woods. 
In a training camp? Yes. Didn't the sentinel stop you? Lavinia, come upstairs. I saw no sentinels. Only the soldiers sneaking down the hill. Union soldiers? Yes. Who else did you see? Who was with them, Mama? Who? You come up here, Lavinia. I don't know why I'm standing here listening to this foolishness. I'll tell you why you're standing there. Because you're very, very, as Mama just said, afraid. What should I be afraid of, Benjamin? A bungler who tried to steal $2,000 from me? Or a crazy woman who dreamed she saw something one night 16 years ago? You go up to your room, Lavinia. That's right, Mama. Go put on a dress. Get yourself ready for a walk. We'll walk around at Colonel Isham's, whose son was killed that night. John Bagtree will be mighty quick to remember that his twin brother died that night. And Mrs. Mercer's oldest son. And the two Sylvan boys, and... We won't have to go any further. Because they'll be mighty glad to fetch their kinfolk. And all the people that owe you on cotton or cane or land. Be the biggest, happiest lynching in the history of Bowdoin County. Lynching? I don't believe in lynching. You leave that to me, Mama. No, Ben, but I Mama, don't. You're losing your witness, Benjamin. <laughs> what a clown you turned out to be. Now stop this nonsense and get out of here. No, Marcus. Our son's staying right here. You want your hospital built, don't you, Lavinia? Your hospital, Marcus. It's for your sake. To make up for all those poor boys who died bleeding on their way from the camp to Mobile. If there'd been a hospital here in Bowdoin, some of them might have been saved. Of course. I should have done it long ago. Yes, you should have, Marcus. You, yourself, without my asking you. You're right, Lavinia. Let's go to my library and start making plans. All right, Mama. You go and talk to Papa. And I'll go and talk to Colonel Aisha. He'll be only too glad to come and ask you whether or not I'm telling the truth. No, Ben. I won't have anything to do with the lynching. Of course you won't. Not of your husband. Not of anybody. Will you lie to them, Mama? Don't bring him here, Ben. Will you, Mama? Will you lie? Lavinia, answer. There'll be no lynching, Marcus. I'll plead for your life with all my heart. Me too. I'll plead for you as hard as ever I can. Better than that, I'll come tomorrow morning and cut you down from the tree myself and bury you with grief. And respect. There you go. How did the Greeks bury fathers who were murdered? Tell me and I'll see to it. Benjamin, don't talk that way. You gave him the right to talk that way. You did, Lavinia, and it's on your soul. I know you're a religious woman and religious people don't lie. But you're subject to dreams. And sometimes your dreams get mixed up with things that actually happen. No, Marcus, I... You've been acting strange for years, Lavinia, you know that. And I'm sure that if I were to take you to a doctor... You won't have the time, Papa. All I wanted was for Ben to stay here. I was even ready to go to Chicago and see your doctor. What doctor? The doctor Ben said you wanted to examine me. Ben lied. I never thought of taking you to a doctor. I... You're a very ugly man, Benjamin. Well, are you ready now? For what? To write a slip of paper saying you sell me the store for one dollar? I certainly do no such thing. And when you finish that, you'll write another slip of paper turning over to me all your stocks and bonds, your safe deposit box, all mortgages, all assets of Marcus Hubbard Incorporated. I'll leave you your proper share of things in my will. Or perhaps increase it if you behave. You're making fun of me again. You made fun of me long enough. It's dangerous now. One more joke and... So stop it now. Stop it. I mean what I'm saying, and you know I do. And it's the last time I'll say it. All right, take the store. Take half of everything else. 
Leave the rest to me. I'll go on living as I always have and tell everybody that because you're my oldest son, I want you'll to... You'll tell that. nobody nothing. Because you can't. And you'll stop bargaining. You'll give me everything you've got. Is that clear? Now give me the keys to your desk. All right. Start writing things down. When you're finished, bring them to me. You're waiting for something? To tell you the truth, I'm trying to think of some way out. A way out? I consider you a lucky man as it is. You'll die in bed. You'll give me enough for a clean bed. Of course. You're my father. I dare say one could make some small bargains with you still. But I don't like small bargains. And I don't like small talk. over to Lionel. Ask for Miss Bertie Bagtree and talk to nobody else. Give her this and tell her to forget about last night. Yes. And uh, tell her I wish Captain Bagtree the best of luck. Well, go on, be quick. Jake. First, carry that up to my room. Yes, sir. Coralie! My breakfast! Good morning, Oscar. Papa! 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 It's me, Oscar, Papa, please! My goodness, Oscar. Where's Papa? Lorette's waiting for me at the railroad station. Papa! I had hoped you'd be gone by now. The thousand dollars on the table. He promised last night, but it ain't there. I've been over the whole house. I even crawled around under the table. Maybe you better go crawl some more. Well, look at you sitting in Papa's chair, eating breakfast at Papa's table. Come on down and have breakfast with me, darling. Papa told you to be out of here. Come on, sit down, honey. Uh-uh. I'm getting out of here before the horse whipping starts. Regina, help me. It's not there. Papa! Papa! The money's not there! Papa, please answer! Looking for me, son? Speak up. It's getting late. The money. You forgot to leave it. It just ain't there. Voice injured at your age is possibly never recovered. The money in there, Oscar, because I didn't put it there. Would you like to give him a little explanation, or will I? I am eaten. An unhappy event interfered. I assure you that I am most sorry for many reasons. None of them having anything to do with you. What's all that mean? That you're not giving me the money? It means exactly that. And it means that Papa has found a new way of postponing for a few minutes an unpleasant writing job. Go back in, Papa. Where would you prefer me to have breakfast? 
Tray in my room, here on the porch, or anywhere you like. My house is your house. I eat a large breakfast, as you know. Should that continue? Certainly. But before eating this large breakfast on this large morning, I want you to finish the papers I'm waiting for. There isn't any chance I could get out of here and on that train without you interfering with me. Morning, Papa. What's the matter with Papa? He's changed. You think it's age? Why aren't you leaving? I'm going to build a new house. Never did like this big barn. You're going to what? Who do you think you are? A man that thinks you've handled yourself very badly. It's a shame about you, Regina. Beautiful, warm, outside. And smart. That should have made a brilliant life. Instead, at 20, you have to start picking up the pieces. I like the pieces. And I'm off to pick them up right now. You'll have to pick them up right here in Bowdoin if you can. You're not going to Chicago. What are you talking about? Your father has no money anymore. No money at all. What's he done with his money? Given it to me. <laughs> to you? What makes you think he'd give it to you? Well, I'm the oldest son. Isn't that the way with ancient kings? Maybe he could find a quotation from Aristotle. Go up and talk to him. I think he's been waiting. Have some coffee with me, Mama. I have to go away, Ben. What for? I can't lie about your father, but I want no part of a lynching. Oh, the party's been cancelled, Mama. Papa's uh, examined his conscience and repented. What happened, Ben? I, are, are you really staying? Mm-hmm. He's uh, decided to retire. He's transferring the business to me. It's a great trust, Benjamin. This was sinful money, but if you put it to good use. Oh, I will, Mama. Don't you worry about that. Ben! What have you been doing to Papa? A great deal. Do you believe me now? Not that it makes any difference. You can't stop John and me. Certainly not. What people want to do, they do. You go ahead your own way. Am I right, Mama? Yes, Regina, you must go your own way. Marion, people in love should be poor. Ben! Tell me what happened. It's not my secret. I'll find out. And the day I do, I'll pay you back with carnival trimmings. Why, Oscar, what's the matter with you? She didn't wait. She left for New Orleans without me. I begged and pleaded. <laughs> Deeply and sincerely. <laughs> Go ahead, laugh. I laughed too, Regina, when I saw your true love, looking like a statue of Napoleon, off to the wars on the same train. So you arranged that too? You couldn't let me live my own All life. All right, that's I... enough. I'm sick of love. I don't want to hear any more about it. You don't want. You go follow your can-can sweetheart and get yourself a wharf job loading bananas. And you, early mature and flower, you go any place you want and see what it's like to be without Papa's money. Or you can both stay. I have a girl picked out for you, Oscar. As for you, honey, remember, you're a scandal in this town. You with your great plan. <laughs> Papa here was the only person who didn't know about you and the Brazilian general. Papa and Horace Giddens. Oscar, get me some ink and paper. I have a job for you. You don't have to get married just because he tells you to. I'm your father. I'll provide for you. We can go away, Regina. You and I. 
I can start over again just as I started once before. When you did whatever Ben made you do, did you realize what you were doing to me? Did you care? I cared very much. And what good did that do? Here you are, Ben. Thank you, Papa. Ah. Big things doing all over the country. Railroads going across, oil, coal. We're going to be part of it. Pour me a cup, too, darling. Think we got a chance to be big rich, Ben? Could be. Listen carefully, Oscar. I want you to bring $2,000 to Horace Gibbons for me, with this note. And invite him to dinner here tomorrow night. <laughs> ben. About the money for the hospital. Not right now, Mama. But Ben, you said... I'm busy, Mama. Sit down. You haven't had your coffee, Mama. Where are you going? Back home. Back to the Piney Woods. You don't mean that, Mama. How could we get along without you? I don't know, Ben. And deep down, I guess maybe I don't care. Not anymore. Now I... I just want to go where I can get a breath of air. You're just upset, Mama. You're tired. No, I'm not tired. I'm not tired and I'm not afraid. But everything's going to be fine now. We're going to have big money. Oscar, Regina, even Papa. I know what's best for all of them. And for you too, Mama. Someday we may even build you your hospital. No, Ben, you'll always be busy. You'll have to be busy because you're a lonely man. All your life you're going to be lonely. An empty man. It seems funny to say, but I don't like you, Benjamin. I don't like any of my children. I just feel sorry for you. Don't take it so hard, honey. Whenever you're lonely, you can come and have dinner with us. And <laughs> if you ever need money, I'll be most happy to speak to Horace for you. Benny, I 